Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast, the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions from the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, news, lifestyle, everything really depending on the guests. We talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Miliotis. On social media, you know me as PD Beats. You will recognize my guests from a lot of unbelievable film and TV shows, uh, but most recently you will recognize her from Uncle Frank, which is going to drop November 25th on Amazon. We were with Sophia Lillis. Sophia, welcome to Pop Turnative. Hi, thank you for uh, inviting me. <laughs> No problem. I mean, um, first of all, I just wanted to say congratulations to the cast and crew of this film. This film, Uncle Frank, is a great film. Um, first thing that kind of came to mind um, when I'm watching this film is from top to bottom, the cast of this movie is unbelievable. Talk about what the experience is working with this cast, Sophia. Oh, it was great. I was really nervous, uh, honestly, because, you know, honestly, I, everyone would be, like, intimidated if they had to, like, um, these amazing experienced actors are, are acting as your, your family. <laughs> so that's, that's just so surreal, you know, to have, have that experience of having these, these scenes where you're, they're like having, you're having dinner with them, but you know, these, you know, there's, you know, Judy Greer and Paul Bettany's there and just, everyone's just an amazing experienced actor. And then here I am like 10 years, 20 years younger than them. Um, and so I have, feel like I had a, like, you know, do better, you know, get it, become a better actor and pull myself up. You know, um, I remember the first two, uh, we had two, um, rehearsals, uh, where Paul was there, Peter was there and Alan was there and I, I was there. And I remember the first time, first day, Paul brought like a binder and a notebook and he was like writing down all this stuff. And so the next day I brought a binder and a notebook and I started writing notes down because I just wanted to do, you know, better <laughs> but then I realized you know after a few days of working and a week passed I felt more at ease because everyone was like a, a extremely sweet so it was fine absolutely and your character obviously the focal point of this film but interesting enough too Sophia is your character is also narrating the film which yeah. is interesting as well what was that dynamic like for you as a storyteller and an actor it is it's a very different style of acting um there's you know one where you're actually in it and you're you're kind of driving the story and another one where you're you're mostly watching and observing and the story is told through her eyes it is about her and uncle frank but it's mostly about their relationship and it's mostly about uncle frank's story and how in the end she starts helping him and so that is basic that is what it's about so it yeah it was kind of more of a it's a different form of acting it's not it's so it was different for me it was it was a little bit kind of like you know how and I'm not okay with this that's also kind of a um a, a narrating you know uh, character but she's also driving the story at the same time so it was different I'm not okay with this was incredible the last the last scene of that show and I interviewed um Aiden who played your younger brother who played Liam I've interviewed oh, yeah. him on the show and it's just <laughs> that last scene is the most insane one of the most craziest things I've ever seen on TV I just want to say that but, um, yeah uh but uh yeah no another thing too you have done um as um as a storyteller i like to call you storytellers because whether you act you write you direct that's what you do right so you're a storyteller um uh, you know you have done a lot of drama before but a lot of people know you from like the horror stuff was this kind of like a little bit like of a of an acting kind of challenge for you because you're used to doing a lot of you know the heavy um horror stuff this is a little bit different than stuff you're usually doing right Right. Yeah. I, that's why I actually picked it or not picked, but this is why I, I really wanted to do this project was because it was so different from the other stuff that I've done. And whenever, you know, when I try to, um, you know, find a good project for me, the next good project, I want to do something that is completely opposite of what I did previously. And this seemed like uh, something that I've never done before and it's completely different direction. So, but that's the reason why I wanted to do it. Absolutely. And, you know, I, on the show, when I interview a lot of people that I'm a big, I'm a big horror movie fan. That's like one of my favorite genres. Um, and it's no surprise that the last 
you know, five to seven years, the horror like genre has exploded. It's incredible. It is evolving. It's amazing. You are part of that, um, that big kind of explosion and boom with, you know, being part of the loser club with the it movies. I mean, I mean, like, what is like, is that crazy to see how amazing and incredible and how big the horror movie genre has become Sophia? Absolutely. I, I was not expecting that response. And I didn't know how big the, you know, the fan base was until it came out. Then everything started changing. There was a lot more horror films coming out. And it seemed like I <laughs> it was I dropped into something completely unexpected. Uh, so yeah, no, I'm, I'm shocked as well. And then you did Hansel and Gretel. And was that kind of like, I mean, was that becoming one of the thing where you're like, yeah, I like doing the horror movies. So was that kind of one of those things where it was kind of like, like you wanted to kind of continue doing the horror movies because you like working the genre? Kind of. It was actually because uh, I wanted to actually do other things and, and focus on other, um, other projects. But this, that one, that script specifically seemed so different and unique. And it was unlike, you know, other horror films I've ever seen before. And it was, it was more of like, it was kind of like almost psychedelic it, it was different from like a horror like jump scare film it was it was it was different and it was new and I really wanted to be a part of that so yeah no the reason actually I did it was because it was an exception really oh absolutely um no it's it's amazing getting back to Uncle Frank I mean some of the some of these scenes and some of the dialogue because I feel I feel like we're kind of shifting towards the writing is really focusing on like the dialogue between two characters, two family members, two um like two like a relationship, the dialogue. And you know, when you're in the car with Paul, um, your your uncle in the film, I mean, those conversations that you're having where you're driving are just so powerful, even though it doesn't seem like it's so powerful. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think that I think the writing was absolutely fantastic and and certainly helped that I was working with Paul Paul Bundy because he's such a real actor you know he's very subtle in his acting um so just watching him work and seeing him become this character was was fascinating to me and I do need to say this because I watched a film and you might not know the answer to this but I'm sure I'm going to figure it out if I talk to a producer of this film but you're in the car with okay so the movie the the name of the movie is Uncle Frank First thing that came to my mind was there's another movie that had an Uncle Frank um, in it, Home Alone. Uh, okay, H- Home Alone, Uncle Frank, right? Oh, oh yeah. So, right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you know where I'm going with this. You know I where don't. I'm, okay, you're in the car yeah. with Paul, and uh-huh. the song in the background is the Cool Jam, Cool Whip song. That's the song that Uncle Frank sings in the shower of Home Alone Two. <laughs> get that no that was that was not a, i think that was a complete coincidence so oh, that's a great regardless it's great because i'm just like because like when i see that the movie's called uncle frank you know you think of home alone uncle frank and then that just blew my mind a little bit kind of like i'm not okay with this you know what i mean like, so yeah i know that's definitely a coincidence um <laughs> maybe it wasn't i don't know i I, I didn't know about it. <laughs> now is it, I just kind of I, I'm on to something, and you're kind of like, oh man, I don't really, I didn't realize Maybe. that. <laughs> um, uh, you know, anytime you work on a project, there's going to be learning experiences for you as as an actor, a storyteller. What were some learning experiences for Sophia Lillis on Uncle Frank? Well, being able to work with such an amazing cast, um, it was kind of being, you know studying abroad, being immersed in kind of this, in this acting world where all these like experienced actors are, are right next to me. So it was mostly just watching. What I've noticed is that everyone has different styles of acting and different methods of creating their ca- character and developing it. So I got to experience, you know, not just one form, but many forms to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm c- still in like the process of learning how to hone in and develop my the my method and and my style and I don't really know fully yet um so it's it was good to kind of be there and watch them watching them work and it certainly helped that my character was kind of the narrator character where she mostly what she does is watches and um observes and that's kind of what I was doing in real life 
Absolutely. You started, you know, um, becoming, they said, like, you know, an up and coming storyteller when, you know, we were introduced to the Loser Club with It and It Chapter 2. We were introduced to all of you and, you know, it just exploded and, you know, you guys were, were everywhere, you know, on social media and everything. I mean, um, one, that must not have been easy to balance, you know, that life. And then you're, you're still, you know, growing up, you know, you're going to school and everything. What was that kind of like, kind of balancing that, to, th- those two lives? It was a little bit different. I tried not to think about it, you know. <laughs> uh, it was I I I'm, I'm I can do that pretty easily, just not think about one thing. So uh, and uh, despite you know having it, it was different um, acting wise. I was getting, I was finding more roles. I was realizing maybe I should do this. Like I can do this as a job. I didn't realize that. Um, but as for socially, it didn't really change that much, other than me being gone a lot. Um, uh, I was in, I went to acting school in New York and uh, everyone else was kind of in the same boat as me where they, they were also, you know, in the acting industry or in, um, also like working on plays and uh, want to be like a, you know, play writer. So they're learning that. So I was just kind of, they viewed me as just another person in the industry. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. And besides acting, I mean, other like interest to you, what, what else, but when you're not kind of acting um, <laughs> and working on that stuff, like, what are you interested in? Like, are you in the video games, are you in the sports? Like, what is your big kind of passion? Um, well, I, I love to draw a lot. Uh, that's one thing I love doing. And it's really convenient, too, because you can just, if you have like a pencil and any form of, you know, material, material you can draw on, that's just, that's it. You can, I can do it a lot on set. And it's become kind of a habit for me. So whenever I'm nervous or not doing anything with my hands, I have like a notebook in front of me, like right now, actually. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> it's become kind of almost a habit, a second nature. Uh, uh, and uh, I would like to get better at it, though. <laughs> I'm actually taking classes now. I've started to take some drawing lessons. Um, oh. So because uh, I'm kind of not doing much other than, you know, this. Yeah, the movie is coming out November twenty fifth on Amazon. What are you hoping people get out of uh, Uncle Frank? God, well, I, I hope they watch it, and it's a really good Thanksgiving movie because mm-hmm. it's a family movie, and it's you know because it's a movie about a family and about the importance of family. So, um, please watch it and watch it with your family if you can. You oh, know? Absolutely. Well, Sophia, thank you so much for coming on Pop Turnative. This was great. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. No problem. Um, where can people um follow you on social media to keep up to date with everything? Oh, uh, well, I have an Instagram, uh, Sophia Willis, pretty straightforward. Um, <laughs> yeah, just do that if you can. Absolutely. And of course, they're, they're going to be able to watch the film on Amazon, correct? Yes. Which is awesome. Well, seriously, thank you so much for doing this and uh, congrats with the film. Um, it's just an incredible film. Thank and uh, we also hope we see you show up in other horror movies down the road. You never know. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, this has been Pop Turnative, youtube.com slash Pop Turnative. For previous episodes, you can catch Sophia Lillis and Uncle Frank, which is going to be on Amazon November 25th. And until next time, this is Petey Beats and Sophia Lillis signing off. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.